Hello and welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So this week I've been given the challenge, if you like. I've been past this book. Okay, so this is a book of, I would class a art era of Japanese furniture. When I first got this, it kind of really worried me. I've seen Japanese furniture and extravagant joints all hang cut, beautifully done. Which I kind of go, oh wow, well, um, um, and it really worries me. So I've got this. Nah, this is simple stuff. So if you're new to making furniture or you want to make some simple furniture for your house and very in vogue at the moment with the style of what's in this, great little book to have a look at. Um, I've got Matt in here doing the cameras with me when we went through the book. He looked at certain things and I mean there's some projects we'll show in a minute. I flicked through. He liked the bookshelf. So, oh wow, I'll have that. So here we go. We're going to make him a bookshelf. I don't know what he's going to do with it, but it's going somewhere, okay? So, that's our project. So, doing a little bit of prep, we've had to machine the wood up, we've got it over here, we've got some tulip, a piece of plywood. So it's just starting to fit the idea of these aren't, nothing that big, you could buy this as pre-machined stuff, local hardware store, B&Q type stuff, you get your pine machined up, doesn't have to be a hardwood. Traditionally, Japanese furniture is all softwood. Sagi, or Japanese cedar, was one of the main materials. So, we've got that. I've got some material here we've got to do for the legs. I'm going to bond it together. I haven't got anything thick enough to make the legs out of. So I thought, well, if we glue it up, we can laminate them. They actually be a bit stronger as well. So, got the basics of what we want there. I'm going to use a mixture of traditional and modern techniques, if you like, a little bit. A lot of this is glued and screwed together. Quite simple to do. Going to mark stuff out, show you how we can cut it. We could cut it by hand. You could go to your machine shop. You cut with your table saw. You might have your mitre saw. I'm going to try and work on my bench a little bit. So that's my aim really to be on here, work on this. So I've got to cut everything over by hand or shoot things or everything else, okay? So that's our aim with this. So I don't know if you want to come in. We'll flick through the book. You can give you a bit of a close-up of what it is. That might be good. So let's just turn around. We'll get you to come and have a look. So lots of different little projects in this. Tables, stools. Storage facilities, high chairs, chairs, lots of different styles of furniture. Oh, and like I said, relatively simple to do. And this is based on a Japanese art era, basically after the Second World War. Short materials, simple made construction furniture. So, let's just move that back. Let's just flip through. I've marked a page. Let's go back a page. So, this is what Matt likes. Hopefully, it might end up looking like this. All right, so what we've got in there, we've got a okay, little bookshelf, table, very 60s, 70s, iconic style of design. So that's where we're heading in a minute. So with the legs for this, I need four legs. Um, they've got to be cut. Ideally, I could do with some 30 mil material, but we don't have anything here. The board material I've got, when I machined it up, there was a ripping off the side. So kind of, can we use the same stuff? First of all, the colour will match nicely. That's quite important. But it's a bit thin, so I need one inch board material. So therefore, if I laminate it together, it'll make the legs stronger because they're glued up. The grain direction will cross over a bit so they won't be as weak. It means you don't have to go buy something else just for that little stage. So that's quite an important part. Could be quite nice. So I've already machined, just had a quick look at what we've got. Try to line up the grain so the colour matches. So that will do two. This will do the other two. And we're just going to basically glue them together. Laminate them up. Just checking how things come together nicely. All right. So I think you can understand what we're going to do there. We'll get you in a bit nearer. And we'll just get one of them glued up to show the sequence. Our boards. I'm going to use a razor block. So we've got a halving joint that we did look. So we're going to lay that on top just to bring that up. I could even twist it diagonally so I can get my clamps. At the moment I'm going to go lengthwise just to give me access to get the clamp in underneath. We want some glue. can go with the glue spreader system. So I'll put that in there. Got our spatula. Silicon glue brush. Just going to spread that out a bit. I don't want loads and loads of glue, so I'm using almost that squeegee type end on this. I've got a brush system there as well. I'm going to keep things tidy. Bit there missing, that would be good. 
Just going to bring our boards back together. Going to fold them up. Get rid of the air in between. Going to do a small rub joint. Trying to level up the ends now. They're not cut to the overall length at the moment, so just trying to level up the ends, make it easier. I need some clamps. I've got some little blocks of MDF which I can use just to cushion it. Go and chew clamps, just really things we had in here. I was going to maybe put four on, but I think we'll get away with two. Look, got to be careful at this stage. Now, that rub joint will help hold things together. It's got rid of the air. Other end, going to do the same. Trying to equal things up. It's not critical, but it's less to clean up later. Put our block on there. Going to angle that one. Gently bring it up, that's better. Could hold that in your voice if you want to and try and do it on the bench, we get better views of what's happening. Just have a quick check, see what's going on, that looks quite good. Got our line down through there. Okay, they closed up nicely. All right, so first two done, gonna repeat it exactly the same for the others. So I'm just really looking at the material. So we have some tulip wood. We use lots of this. I've tried to be a bit selective. So this has got some lovely colour. Okay. Um, got three bits. Okay. So hopefully enough to do. We're gonna have a look at sizes and stuff in a minute. But wise, we need to go back to this. We're working off a plan, a measurement, nothing else. So let's just go into here. Um, nice picture, I'll show you this in a minute. Let's just flip over the page. So board-wise, I need 18 mil thick, 180 mil wide, 600 long, six bits. So these are 1200, so I've double lumped. Now initially when I looked at trying to glue these together, what do I want where? Now we could get real simple, which is the most decorative board out the three? It's the one you're going to see the most. Got to be that. All right. So I'm hoping you can see the colour on there. Lovely green colour down through there. I don't know if I hold that up that way. Maybe. All right. So nice colour. That's going to be our top. Okay. So we know where that one's going. The bit of plywood I'm just reading against. That's the ends. These are actually the bookshelf bits. Now can I ever cut them in half and use to create the right angle? Or likewise, I could actually glue them almost like that. The colour matches quite well, but it'd be nicer to cut these in half and use the board with the same board to do the bookshelf. So the colour variation doesn't change amongst that. It will look better. So we're already thinking about what we're going to do. Bookwise, like I said, it's quite nice on this. So I think what we do, we're going to get you in again. We'll show you what we've got and give you the details. So, finished thing in the book, we're just really looking at, that's what it'll look like completed. So the top is probably the most decorative bit of wood. Got the bookshelves, the leg tree just glued up. As I said, quite simple, flip it over to here, gives you detailed shots of what's happening, how that works, cut out for the handle and stuff we've got to do. Let's flip the page. Just gonna slide you back, hopefully that's in line. Gives me detailed cutting list, all up in here, so the sizes of what we need. Accurate drawing for the size of your plywood, so it gives you your measurements, your angles, and then your board bits. And then, we'll just flip to here. Quite simple construction, but nice detailed drawing to show you what's going on. All right, so I'm gonna try and follow all of that. And then we have a little step-by-step -step guide, or you can watch me. So we've said we've got the board for the top. Now all the boards are going to need to cut to be 600 and reality they've got to be glued together in different orientations. So two are going to make a right angle corner, one's the top. So the top one's actually the most important one for me to challenge at the moment because I've got to glue it together, can't screw it at the same time. 
so we've got to work on that clamp holding it so that's the first one to do so i've got to cut it now you could cut this a number of ways and i'm going to show you a couple okay if we're going to do it by hand not everyone has nice fancy power tools or a chop saw or a table saw okay so let's still do stuff by hand all right so on here first thing we want to do let's have a look i'm just going to bring my water bottle in i'm going to clean my bench i want to get rid of the dust wipe that off that'd be good i want a nice square corner end so shooting board by cleaning the bench should help that and stop it moving i'll lose my water i know we didn't clean and we better do it at the same time won't hurt just going to clean those rubber feet that'll stop it sliding that's good here you go bit of tulip wood doesn't have to be tulip just something nearly level with the surface because this being a longer length i need to support it just to give me something on the bench there okay and playing i want to clean this end up and then the last thing obviously i'm going to look at i need a square what have we got at the moment we're out towards me it comes as an angle the board is parallel i'm just going to flip it over Go to there so we can shoot the end of this get it nice and square then we've got a measuring point we can cut a 600 shoot the other end repeat it okay so first one really is effective getting this end nice and square so we've got our setup we're ready to go nice light cut now next stage let's have a look at i just need to lift it up put a square on it i can use the light that's coming in from there see where we are i'm going to work off both sides just to check what's going on we're not bad i put my board back in just square that back up get it equal quite nice trying to look at what we're getting shaving wise to see what's going on push through not too heavy should give us clean finish let's measure off the corner we've just looked at that's better we've now got a nice square corner so simple approach with that shooting board will give me that Christmas clean corner next stage I haven't looked at better have a look at this We'll check this way. Let's get the glasses back on. On there, actually really good. So if you get any variation here, and I'm exaggerating it with the square, remember on something like a Bailey or Bedrock style plane, you've got lateral adjustment on the blade. By adjusting the lever, you can project the cut top or bottom, so you can square that up on the board. So even if your plane sides aren't 100% square to the board, by moving that blade, you can get that accuracy. That's really nice. Nice and clean, clean edge. All right, so first one shot. So we've got our end nice and square. We've checked it, both angles, both planes. We now need our length, so let's just have a quick look in the book, remind myself, gotta go over a page. 600. Still roll. Let's drop that on there, it actually goes to 600. So what I'm actually doing, probably the opposite way to what most people do, if we get weird and wonderful, we can get longer rule. Most of us would actually have our rule, and we'd have our numbers coming away from that in, get it level, and you'd scribble six lines, trying to mark it. Why not, and I could go with either. I've got one in here, I can use it as a depth stop. So I'm actually coming down now, there's our 600 last digits, look, onto there. I'm sighting it, set the end of my rule level where it will be, draw one pencil line across the end of the rule. Okay, that gives us a nice mark. From there, we can transfer that with our square coming across. Can't go far enough with what I have. Extend it. That gives us our line. All right, then we're going to set up, we can cross cut that. Having got our first board marked up, we've got our cross cut line. Going to cut it. 
Now, I've been thinking about this. It's, uh, it's uh, who and her, where do we go, what do we do? Okay. I'm going to put the board across the bench when it out here. So I'm going to need a couple of clamps. So let's just get something that we can hold it in place with. I want to be there. I could do it with a bench hook. Look at that way. Just going to move our path board out there. Okay, so we've got our board set up. Going to go Japanese, so. Um, so I think if we get you in just a little bit nearer, we're going to get you just to focus on it. Let's try and explain this and what we're doing. Be interesting to know if we asked you where you were going to start catching with this. Most of us, if we had traditional Western style saw or being trained up, I'd probably start at the back corner and they'd push and try and cut. The Japanese would actually start here, near the corner. Okay. More in line. And they pull down. So I'm cutting just on the waist side of the line, getting a bit of a wonder, so let's bring it back so I can alter the blade a bit, that's better. I can actually use both hands. I'll deviate off the line as long as I'm on the waist side, that's not going to worry me, it just means more to shoot in the minute. Getting nearer. Got to support it. So first bit cut off. Get our piece of wood back. I want to clean that up now. Okay. I don't have to be this fussy. If you can get a nice clean saw cut dead on your line, I've wandered a little bit in the last little bit. We can square it up. This is giving you the versatility of what we can do with a shooting board. So I've got oh, lots off this edge. So all we're going to do. Shoot that in. Working back to my pencil line. Flip him over. Not on the back corner there. Can be good. Just alternate that. I know the board's parallel. Just on my pencil line, I can just see it now. One more, nice and flat. Okay. So we should have, hold it up again, just using the camera light, just to check, that looks good. So we've got something now that's an accurate 600 long square inch corner, okay. So I've got one, with the board we've just cut, the bit we cut off, the send, I'm going to go with that bit, let's just have a look at grain feature, we've got a length now where things come together, which way do I want, I'm looking at which way the boards are going, ideally you want to turn that one over, but the grain goes together nicely here, bring it round, not as nice, over, got sapwood on the edge, so I've either got to have that in the middle, underneath, or the outside edge, Okay, so you can start to play around quite a bit at this stage on what's going to look better. So you can see what I'm doing, just alternating the boards. Where does the grain come up nicer? That's not bad. Got an ink that here coming across. We have our line here that comes in. We'll show you our grain a bit more in a minute. Or do we move it down? So I can play around with, can't be that far. We could come up. That's quite nice. All right, so I think it's getting the idea of what I'm trying to do now is look at where the grain direction will look better. 
Ooh, that's a shame. I'm trying to look at this dark line, continuing it. Just not quite long enough. So dilemmas of, isn't it? I'm going to come up to there. So we're going to work off the far end that we've just cut. Now that's that. Board wise. Ooh. Ideally, we want to be over. So we're going to have... We'll go with that. Okay, so... Hopefully, I think you've mastered all and watched all of that. All right, a bit of fun trying to turn the boards round. If I move these round to here, I think you can probably see up the board how the grain colour I'm looking at, the coloration coming up, trying to match that. This is on the top, it's the most prominent bit you're going to see. On the end grain section, I've got one that goes cupping will go down, so annual rings, the other one reverses, so they're opposite, okay? So that's quite an important part. So. Centre of the tree on this board was out here. Centre of the tree on the other side, lower down. So already starting to think about all those little things. We know they're coming together there at the moment. I'm just going to draw two lines. That indicates top, where they're coming together. Need to shoot this end, trim it. So we're going to do exactly the same as we've just done. I think we'll get that done and then we'll get you back in. So we've got our two boards, our mammoth shooting session. All right, I need to learn to cut straight with a handsaw again. It takes note, but it gives you the perspective of even if you can't cut straight, so like a shooting board, you can square things up, you can get things exactly the same length. And I mean spot on. Not nearly, they are dead equal. Last few swipes, test fit, okay, good. So now we're going to glue them together. So I've got them laid out like they need to be. Let's move that, I'll get rid of that. Oh, got a few clamps ready to go. So we're going to clamp this up, glue it together. This needs time to dry. So I'm going with three clamps on this. Just laying our two boards in. We're just having a look how they come together. I haven't planed that up. That's just purely off the machine. So I just want to see what's happening. Just finger touching, getting things an idea. Looking at what's going up. So not too much pressure on this. Just trying to make sure we lose anything as a join line and they're nice and straight. That's not bad, okay? I can cope with that. So we're undo. We need glue on one surface, so let's get the glue back in. But put the glasses back on to make sure we get it on the right bits. Don't want too much off the edge. Now make sure we control it. Okay. I've got to drop them in. At this stage you're already starting to think about what's happening. I'm trying to make sure we're dead level on the end. We spent all that time getting it level, so let's make sure it's correct. Just going to finger tighten one clamp to make sure it's level here. Let's find our glue point. Let's add a small clamp. Go do the same the other end. And let's just work down these, see what happens. Might need something in there in a second. Forget that. Let's pin this one up. That's come together. This one got a bit of twist on the board. I want it flat if I can. Again, checking our ends. Tiny bit maybe. And I mean, it's minute. Probably wouldn't show. But let's have a pull. Oh, that's better. Do our clamp back up. 
All right. So that we can leave. Let it go off. Let it dry. That's all we need. All right. Having glued it up, we just need to now let it dry. Okay. So we glued the top bit up. That's kind of necessary to get glued together so we can keep working whilst that's gluing. So this stage, we've got to cut these to 600 long as well. And then get nice and clean and everything. That means more shooting. No, no, I'm going to cheat. So let's move the stuff off the bench a minute. Let's get rid of it. Now, we did think about this earlier. Okay, so I've got to cut them to the same length. Let's set the path board up. On here, I can put it just on top of my workbench. I can come that way just a tidy bit. Look. Better. Kind of cheating, but it's going to speed things up. Now, what do we need to do? We need to cut these accurately to 600 long. Let's just see where they go. That's there. Um, the first thing we we'll probably need to do, and I need to grab my square back. Let's bring the book back into play. That's on there. We need to get these nice and square on the ends. All right, so we do need to do that. Now we can do that on here quite easily. Just got to play around, set things up. Now we could even probably do them in pairs. That adds more stability to what we're going to do. We could work with two boards at a time. We've got to keep them together, all those little things. So I'm just going to set this up and then we'll get you back in. You can have a look and so I'll show you what we've done. So lay this up on the path board. I'm pretty sure in the 1950s if they had a guide rail saw they probably were used it. Okay, so this is just going to make things just a bit quicker than using a hand saw, hand plane to shoot the ends. I might need to still do that a little bit. So I might still need to shoot the ends to get the accuracy right back to where I want. So path board, I've got main board up on the bench. I have a scrap piece of plywood we've just put in underneath. Our two boards you want to cut. By cutting two together, got more stability across the width. Series up to keep me parallel. And I know anything that I rest against here will be 90 degrees. So locked in place this side with our duck clamp. Going to bring the guide rail on. Can you clip this on place so I haven't got to worry about it moving? I can have a bit more of that end. Bring it down to here. So I'm checking now where I am on the end of my boards. Where do I want to be? That's not bad. I can tighten these up. Haven't got any cracks or splits. Let's just do one other thing whilst we're here before we go racing to cut it. How short's the short one? Okay, we've got 70 mil over, that's good. There'd be nothing worse than working out you're under 600 long because you haven't measured it. That one's a bit longer, so that'll be good. Okay, so we set up, got that ready to go. So nice clean end, that's good. First bit done. Next stage, we need to measure off of there. So let's bring that back a second. We can do the same as we did before. We're gonna to go to 600, we're gonna draw a line. A couple of ways of doing this, let's see where things work out on our board, I can see we're going to be a little bit off. We're going to need to wiggle things about. Look at there, our path holes. I can move things that. We'll take that one and we'll swap these two around. So let's just undo. All right, so a little bit of resetting to do at this stage. I could actually, which might be easier for you guys. If not, I'm going to work with my back to you in a second. Going to turn everything right round. Right, so we've got our line. Let's bring that round to there. If not, I'm going to like, say have to work from the other side of the bench to do that cut. Get things back in place without pushing that on the floor. And we'll grab the book.
These are the important ones, so I think we put that back in. Okay, so at this stage we've reached that. We've got our ply board underneath. We've got our rail roughly in line. I'm going to move that about a little bit in a minute. I want to get them right. But we've actually got to cut four of these. So this will give us two. We then need to move the boards out. Be nice to make it repeatable and quick. So let's have a quick look and give us something as an end stop. All right, so that, that guide rail with the cut should give us a nice accurate cut. Better than I can do with a handsaw. Might still need to skim it a little bit with the shooting board, but hopefully should be really good. All right, so that will give us something that's nice and square. So we're set up, let's have a go, see what happens. So two, let's have a quick look, do a sight check. <laughs> Wow, that's as good as my shooting board. That's almost embarrassing. Fantastic, okay. Quick down, what have I just done there? Just numbered the boards so I know which one was which grain wise. So when they come together, one is going with one. So I've done that. I'll take out hit one. Slide this down, you can see our ploy, we can come down to that length stop nicely. Let's just tighten that up. Up to there. Get things so it sits square again. Just double checking things and meeting nicely on the end. Got our ply board underneath, which you can probably see here a bit more. Bring it in. Clamp everything up. Checking my ends look good. Ooh, that was interesting. Turn our duck round a minute. Line it back up. When I tightened it with the rotation, it pulled the boards up the bench. It's pulling it away from my lamp stop, which we don't want. So let's work against that rotation. Pushing downwards, that's better. So we're set. So we're set for that next cut so we can bring things back in place again. Got our saw back on, our plywood. Double checking everything on the ends. They look good. Just check there's any movement. Okay, so you can see get them out of the way. Let's just strip some of this out. Around. Cut the same length, that's great. Wow. Okay, so we can easily make that repeatable and cut two, four, whatever. So we've used that length stop, really does help. Next thing on these, we've obviously got to glue these together to make a right angle. So they are glued and screwed together. We'll look at that. The other thing we've got to do is mark out the shape for the ends. So let's just get the book back in. Let's move a few things out here. I'll reset some of this back up in a second. Then we go to the glasses. Now we've just got to flick through and find the page. Which project was it, Matt? Okay, so next thing we want to do, and I think we'll get you in just a little bit. Just going to flick the page. Got to do my bit of plywood. So we've got to cut this out. So actually why we've got the path board on the bench, it'll be more useful to use it. So I think we're going to cut the ply out at the moment. So I need to mark out the shape, get all that done. And then we've got to cut the ply to shapes. All right, so we're going to start with two rectangular bits. All right, so we've got our shape well shape there.
So let's just take our guide rail out, move it over. So we've got our two bits of ply. We've used the limb stuck for those as well, so we can cut those to the same size. Let's just move this. Oh, so we have our scrap board. So at this stage, what I'm going to do with these, I'm actually going to fix them together. I'm going to screw down the corners. I need to look at the plan a little bit. We've got to measure off that to work out exactly where the angle shape of this thing is. But if I screw down the corners, I can hold them together whilst I cut it. That's a beneficial thing. I've also got the handle to cut out. So again, I might be able to use that position to screw it together to hold it. Beneficial, instead of fighting to hold two bits and maybe lots of clamps, could we fix it in the corners that are going to get cut off anyway? So that can be good. So next little plan I've got, I need to look at drawing the shape out. I can do that on one of them. So we can work off the plan in the book again. I can measure everything out. I'll get that drawing done. And then we'll show you how we're going to cut them up. Right, okay, let's get you in, we better have a, a closer look at what just done so you can understand what's going on. So, let's get you in, we'll get you, do a bit of a closer look. Do a board, we've obviously drawn it out as a profile shape. It's better if I just lift it up a little bit, it's going to make it easier. I've even worked out where all my screw holes are going to go to join it together. So I've actually pilot drilled each of the holes. Right them all the way through. But I can also use them to, in fact I've drawn a pilot hole which is small enough, I can screw the two boards together so I can fix it and hold it in place. That allows me to work on both boards exactly the same time. So everything's just temporarily fixed at the moment. That allows me to cut it out, they'll be the same shape, everything. So that's really useful to do. On the top here, they actually recommend putting a 10mm hole in each of the corners, but I think it's nice to have that nice curve. So I've drilled a 30mm hole all the way through Put a little bit of masking tape on the back, that will reduce the breakout as you bust through. And then we can cut out the straight bit in a second in between. All right, so all those little things are adding up, try and make it a bit easier. The next thing we're going to do is cut out the outside shape. So we can go back to using the guide rail for this, I think will be easier. You could use jigsaw, bandsaw, whatever you like. I'm trying to do it on the bench in here, so it makes it easier to see. So let's set the guide rail up for that bit. So I've set the guide rail up. Now on this it's a case of almost aligning it. More difficult to line up on the board, so I've had to swing the board round. I've got the limp stop in just as a two-point contact off the pins now. So I'm really sighting this by eye instead of relying on it being dead square. But I've got to take a bit of time to set it up. We've still got a board in underneath. But like I said that limp stop's quite an important part to stop things moving again. So I'll bring that on. We moved our depth, so I need to move it back. Two layers. It's like a millimetre more. Okay, we cut the main shape out. We've got our bookshelf bits to go in. I've got the shelf point here. Next bit we're gonna do is cut out that handle. Um, again, it's quite interesting with the book. You can do this with a hand saw. So they've got Japanese saw with chip front. Okay, so a small chip. You know, and I'd actually clamp a baton on. But I've got my guide rail saw right now. So we can still do it with that. So I'm gonna cheat. All right, so the circles and the end will help. Let's put the board back in. we we'll set this back up the same as we've been doing. So 
So we've used obviously the guide rail on here. Let's just unclip from there, bring that off. And so you could you could do this by hand, possibly jigsaw, whatever. Now at this stage I've used the wedge we cut off. So in hindsight, if I was going to make lots of these, I might do that first. You could go with your router, cut it out if you like. All right? But whilst it's still a rectangular block, it's easier to hold. So I've used the bits we cut off to make it back to rectangular, to make it easier to hold. So, done with them. This stage we've got our handle bit, but it won't come out. I've got to finish cutting it. So in reality, I've got a little bit of work to do with a handsaw. So I'm going to move our saw. Let's move the book just out to there. We can probably, probably got enough room just to get on the vice without taking our board off. We will want the board off the bench in a minute anyway, but I'm just going to come down to here. You guys can see the back view now, you can see your slot, you can see my masking tape I put on to help protect. I'm just selecting Japanese saw because actually we could go into here nicely now. Hopefully I can feed through. I'll get my glasses. I shouldn't really need them for this. We're just going to square up that corner. A little bit of cleaning up just to do, nothing too bad. Get in there. And here you're just going to go in with Japanese saw rasp. So let's work along. Got a little step here which is the end of the curved blade. I need to blend it in. Okay. Right, at this point we're done really with the path stuff. Um, so what I want to do, gonna have a declutter, pack things away. We'll get the shelves back in, get those done, and then we've got a bit of cleaning up to do. So we'll put this out of the way. So I'll see you in a second. We're shelves, All right, we've got to screw these together. Um, we've just had a little discussion here about the fact we've got sharp corners on this, you've got the sharp corners on the ply. Just going to add a round over. No, it's not in this. All right? So, just going to do a round over detail just to soften those corners. So, we set up a little small router table. Before we go screwing these together, it's going to be easier to do those corners. So, I can do the edges, get them done. That'd be nice. I can do the plywood. We've also got the little legs still to cut out, so a few tires still to go, fast getting there. So really this is about softening the edges, so all we're going to do is work out which ones we need. We'll put a pencil line on them, we can mark them, I've got those to do, the shelves and the top edges will be good as well. All right. So that's really why we set the little router table up. So we're going to do a little bit there, soften the edges, then we've got to sand it, get these together, then we can start to construct it. So, glasses, earmuffs. Router. I think we'll get you in, you can come and have a look. So, really cheap. That little curved edge is all we're going to do. That's all we're going to soften, so hopefully you can probably see that. 
just down here. I've got the other boards obviously to do, but exactly the same principle. That's quite a simple little task, but just take that sharp corner out. It's going to get dented and damaged quickly, so that just feels nicer. So I'll keep going with those for a sec. Okay, so we've done the same thing. The last thing we're going to do is cut the legs. At the moment, we need to get these the shelf bits glued together, create that right angle. This is quite an interesting thing. You could do biscuit joint, whatever, in the boot, just screw together. So I'm going to glue and screw them. Should work nicely, it's quick and simple. But like I say, you could biscuit, you could domino, you could do whatever you like. You could do slide dovetail if you like. So here, let's keep it simple. So. This goes back to almost making a carcass, so I've got my right angle where I want it to be. I've got to screw down through this board, fix it into the other. So, what we're going to do, this board is going in the vise, that's my inside face. I want a backing board to clamp in, so I'm going to put those in the vise. I've got to wiggle them over out a little bit, so I'm going to move that along. Let's come down a little bit. That should do. Clamp it up. Do you think we've got a lot this end and the board moves a little bit? Let's put a clamp on, pull everything back against the bench. There you go, that was good. We've got an upstep at the moment, which isn't a bad thing. Makes it easier to get to. How much is it? Oh, that's fantastic. That's good. And we've got our board to sit on the top. All right, so you can see how we're laying things out now. This gives me something to work up against. I've got to go careful how much I pull it about. The MDF will flex a little bit, which is quite amazing. All right, so I've got to make sure, try and push that forward. Get to the next thing I want to look at. We need half of the measurement of the board to mark this out of. I can mark it whilst we're in there. I'm going to play with my quick square setup. We've got 18, we want 9 mil. That's got to come on the top, so we've got to be into that. Just want something as a line. All right. I'm being a little bit heavy with my pencil, so at least it will show on the camera. Got to there. I then could do with the long ruler, which is down here. Six hundred through three hundred is halfway. I think we're coming 50 and 50. Three, or do we have two 50s, 125? Do we need five screws? Uh, let's, let's go for it, we've marked them. So five screws, okay. Bring that back in for a minute. I can line things up on the end. That's good there. Checking where we are, just going to pilot drill these now. So we've got our centre line, which is important. Got one there, got to find the other one. Checking we're level still. I think I can see it, but let's double check. 50, 125 is in there, that's where it was. Okay. <sighs> Reason for drilling them first, we can then clean the fluff out of that drill. We then want a little bit of glue. 
Let's go with the spatula end. Look, that's better. Glue's getting a little bit thick, so I need to be working quicker. Must be that Indian summer we have. Clean that off. Put our board back on. Don't want that there. The joint just a little bit. Pull it back and forwards. Push it in. This is giving me something to work back against there. Just a little bit worried that that little bit of MDF is bending. I'm going to move my support board up. Let's pull that straight. Also pin it in place. Now this end's got a small step, so move again and do. That's better. That looks everything in place. We know we've got a backboard keeping it square. We then want some screws. Um, got options, you can go whatever you like. I'm going to go with some stainless steel screws just for the fact the silver colour I think will look nice with this when we've got oil. Tiny bit. That's better. That one's still look slightly proud. That's good. And do uh, we'll keep that fish water in a second. Maybe there. And hopefully. This back edge nice and flat all the way down. I can see we've got a little gap, so I might just have to pull that up with my clamp. Okay, but looks good. So, haven't got the first one. Gonna do exactly the same for the second. I'll get you back in a minute. So, okay, where are we up to? We've got the shelf bits, the ply ends, the chuck done, just the legs to do. And I think I've saved the worst bit till last. All right, so these are, we'll get you in in a minute and have a look. I've drawn out on the legs, detailed shape we need. Just got to hand cut them out. So they're yeah, going to take a little bit of time. Got to do them by hand, going to cut them down. We'll get you in a minute and show you where the cutouts are. I've worked out, I can't mark up one angle. So I'm going to actually cut them, then assemble it, put them on there, mark it up accurately so I've got them sitting accurately on the ground and then we can finish trimming them. But the first thing to rough out that bulk. So I think we'll get you in, you can have a closer look at what we've drawn on. So a bit closer in the book, you get detailed sketch of the leg, the shape, cut out bits. So I'm drawing all four up, really give me a go ahead. Once I've marked one, I could mark it off the other, but I'm gonna mark them all out, repeat mark them. So I've got an angle coming down here, an angle that comes across. So that's my square point. That's the angle we need that creates a square corner. Then the trim bit, this is the bottom of the leg, this is the bit that goes under the shelves. Next one over, I've highlighted where the waist section is, so you don't cut the wrong bit. There's nothing worse, all right? So, all I've done is repeat all four, and I've transferred those lines all the way round. Okay, so from there, going to load it in the vise, we can start cutting. For the first one in the vise, we're going to cross cut, which is that angle cut. So I've actually positioned it so that the actual pencil line is square to the top of the vise even if the work isn't, it's going to make it easier to do that cut. So that's the first little bit we're going to do. Next thing is the safety net on the back edge. I've got a piece of plywood that means it limits how far down I come. I want something as a cross cut, so just see how much room I've got behind me. Nice and gently on my start, using my finger and thumb as a pinch point. Let's get a start line, that's good. Now just positioning. Nice and gentle on the pull. Tiny bit to get on the back, that'll do, I think. So we've done our cross cut down to here. I'm going to do this long cut now. Now it's very daunting because we've got to start right on this edge. There's nothing to position the saw on. There we, we took our spare blocks. I've got a scrap end, I'm going to use that. 
I'm going to put it in the vise the other way round at the moment just to give me a way of holding these together. I'm going to bring up the scrap one, it is on the right hand side as I'm looking at it. I've created this little lip just there. I want something more of a ripsaw. Uh, I'm going to get there now. That means I can come up to that step, hopefully, gently get my saw in position. Let's have a look from the back edge, see where I am. Coming down through. Need to just follow through our cut. Meet them up, a little bit to go. So, done with the saws. Got some beautiful door wedges. Okay, so at this stage we've cut them out. I've laid them down on the bench, backstop, somebody to clamp it using the bench hole so I can clamp the four together. A couple of small clamps just on here to grip everything. These are the bits that actually fit under the shelves. So as, as long as they're clean, they don't have to, they're never going to be seen is what I'm getting at. They, they screw proof in the back. So as long as I can get them the same and they're flat and they're level, I've got a little step on this one. This is the bottom bit that pokes out. So we need to clean that up. So let's grab it. What we're really going to do, like cut wheel block plane. You could do them singly, but it'd be nice to get all four the same. Um, this makes it a bit more uniform, clamping them together. Probably makes it a little bit hard, easier to hold as well. I can work from either direction. And all we're really trying to do is clean up that handsaw cut. Uh, it's not bad, I can even come down the angle. Fantastic, for the same. Next little thing I'm going to do, work out the drill holes so these can fix onto oh, our shelves. Okay. So I'll get those drilled and then we can fix those on. So I'll mark out the holes and drill them. I don't know if you guys are going to want to see that, it's quite boring. So in here, just going to mark out so I can use the angle side but you want to get the screws coming through square to that from where we're drilling. So I can use the stock of the square or the blade from there. And I've worked out from the other end, transfer that over. So I've gone the width of the far edge and the inside one. Transfer it over, we can come to our center mark. We could have them offset, doesn't matter too much. I'm going to pilot drill through those and then we're getting fixed. So I think you can pretty much understand how we're going to pilot drill those. Cordless drill to drill a bit. All done. All right, so I'll get you back in a second. So I've cut the legs, just giving them a light sound. We've got the shelf in the vise. I've got the board that bolts on the top, so the screw holes are here, that's correct. This has got to go on top. I need a length stop of 82 millimeters coming in. All right, so that's to there. I'm gonna hold this with a clamp, so I need something deeper throat. So I'll put that on there, jiggle it about, it'll drop down. Let's just gently tighten it. Why did I never get free hands? Just checking where we are with our square or our length stop. Let's check with the square, with square on there. You could put a pencil line on and screw it up to there. That's on. I've still got a few pencil lines on my feet. Now at this stage, I'm putting this on dry. I don't want to 
glue it on at the moment. Um, we've had a discussion here about doing something as a polish with this, so maybe some Rubio oil to put on this. So I'm going to do that. It'd be nice to be able to take it apart and do those components separately, then put it on and maybe glue it as well. So, longer screw. Now I'm getting pocket hole screws with this. I like the dome head idea. I want to use it on the outside of where the shelf is and where we glue on. So I've got my screws there. Check it doesn't go through. That'd be embarrassing now, wouldn't it? So, bottom one. Check we've got the right length. Let's just have a quick check. I've got my thickness there. I've got the cutoff of the shelf. Whew, that seems right. I'll put that one down there. First one fixed. Got to do the same the other end. And then I'm going to repeat it for the other shelf. All right, so let's move that down. We have our length stop. I'm just going to do... So one side done at the moment. Let's just move the clamp. When this goes in, I've still got to trim the bottom of the leg. Okay, so you can see how this is going to sit on the bench. I will then mark out, once I've worked out the angle on the main frame on the plywood, we can trim this after, but I can make all four the same. So staying now to try and put things together, we've got the top, or the shelf as you want to call it, we've got the plywood sides. So on the plywood, I want to find the centre point. So I put a little bit of masking tape, draw a centre line. That weird things, isn't it? Okay, why do that? That saves me drawing on what we've cleaned up. I've then got a batten. This is a spacer board. So this is 100 mil wide. This is what they recommend that shelf is set down by. So that makes it easy. I've drawn a line. Doesn't have to be the dead center. Cross it down one face. I can look in from my edge and I'm gonna just clamp it on and then we'll turn it over and give you a view. I'm getting this on here now. I can probably come that side, but it's gonna make it easier to move it about and get it level. So one, I'm gonna do the other clamp. Flip that round a little bit. Clamp it in. Fight with the vice. Got all this bench space. Now I want this little corner. So I'm going to bring it up. That's the first thing. Let's get it clean. I'm going to push that down to its level. Just tighten the clamps. I can check my pencil line here continues down our masking tape. So we've got our line, comes down through, down to there, okay? Next little stage, I'm going to make this a little bit difficult for me. Look at that. On my board, I've got the glue line which comes down the middle. So I can sight that, and again, I can do centre line on there. I've got top and bottom, this is the underside, because it's got the weight. I can line those lines up, get rid of the fluff. I can sight that, that'll go on there. That's a way of positioning. At this stage, I'm gonna to need to get a clamp in just to hold it, so. So I've clamped it all in place. So at this stage, let's move this about carefully. I've got the quick grip clamps pulling on, you'll see in a minute. I've got my center line here. That little bit of masking tape and that button with the mark on makes everything line up so we can line up there. Gently gonna flip them round, oh, this side. Our lines that comes across, goes onto our board that we want to screw on. And then we're clamped on with those quick grip clamps on there. Now you're going to lose me just for a minute, I'm going to vanish. But we've got that positioned, we're using this to pull it up square. Got my screws, I've already pilot holed everything in underneath. We did that a long time ago. Come on. Second one.
So we have one end fixed, gonna do exactly the same for the other. Set it up exactly the same. We'll get that one fixed, and then I'll get you back in, we'll fix the corner shelves. Right, we've fixed this end, we've got the clamps on. I'm just gonna come round so I've got everything positioned. I can line up the bottom nicely. I've got my holes, so I've got the clamps just to hold it and make it accessible on the bench. So I've just got to run round. Bend down here, I've got a hole there. I'll keep my head down a bit, you can probably see. And there. the other side. Nice thing we're using the screws like this with the washer head. So pocket hole type screw. A little bit of decoration but they don't pull in as much. Should be there. That's a bit thick. So I think, let's just see if we can get you in to look over my shoulder. We're gonna look at the feet section down on here. Now I said about the little corner points, we wanna cut those back. So at this stage, I can mark this up nicely. It's a got a way of scribing them off the bench. So, that was one of those problem things of trying to mark out that position. That might be a little bit thick, I could go thinner, we could have a shorter point, we can angle it, but this gives me a way of just marking those up. That's quite good. I can do the other end. So at that stage, obviously, I can cut those off. Hand saw, get them hacked back nicely. This stage, then the last thing, really, gonna give it a good clean up. And then we've got a little bit of polishing to do. So we cut the first two feet off, so we clamp them, we've got that piece of ply. Now having done two and you swing it around, the whole unit will drop. So I need to prop them up, so I need the same thickness of the plywood. So this is the off cuts we had. I'm gonna just put those under those two feet we've cut. That sits it all square again. Now I can come back round and we can do the other two here. Slide this along. Let's keep it there because that will go under that foot if we need it to. Reposition the clamp so it sits square. Fine edge of the saw again. That saw around, so let's just bring the unit round, put that down there. I've got a little bit of tape to tape off here. So I take those off. Our centre lines. That's just gonna go down out of the way. So hopefully let's just spin it around a bit. At the moment it sits nice and level, that quick scribe worked really easily. That's not bad. It's gonna look nice with a bit of polish, a bit decorative with the screws, made that a feature. Colour of the tulip wood will come out beautifully with a bit of polish. So we're gonna have a play with that and then I think we'll do a picture of the finish thing when we're done. So, there you have it. Something finished, right? We've even put a polish on it. So, we've used the Rubio Monaco wrench. So, a bit of red, a bit of clear. Let's have a quick fling, right? 
it gives you a bit of an idea, very stylistic, as I kind of said, that kind of era. The amount of people that come in and see this one, it's been sat outside here, just waiting to get into here and finish this up. Oh, wow. Can I have that? Can I take it home? So, Matt, you've got competition. So, hopefully you enjoyed that. Good little video. If you've enjoyed, give us a thumbs up. Go on, subscribe. Share this if you like. I mean, it's quite a nice project. You could even put your books on it. Oh, there you are. Enjoy.